Hey everybody, this is Dory. I'm that person who can't decide if she wants to do Halo commentaries or Photoshop tutorials. Well, today I happen to be doing an animation Photoshop tutorial for my DeviantArt watchers who are thinking about doing something in animation. I don't have a lot of history in animation. I've done it as a hobby, and I've taken a few classes on it in school. Um, to do animation of CS4 was a pain in the butt for me. CS5, they made it ultimately simpler by making it a lot like say some of the other Adobe programs like After Effects and Adobe Premiere. To open up your animation you go to animation. If you don't get this timeline down here which should look reminiscent of the other Adobe programs, what you're going to want to do is close your update thing because it's annoying. Go to this little tiny bar over here and you're going to want to say convert to timeline. Right now it says convert to frame animation. Let's see what that looks like. If you have this, this will make every layer of frame for so many seconds and it's a pain in the butt to work with. It's so much easier to just convert to timeline. When you're on the timeline, which I totally just screwed myself up by whoop, whoop, there we go. Um, here you can control how long each layer is. So here's layer one and to select it I can either select it here in the layer palette or select it over here in the timeline. And you can drag from here to here. As you see this red line, once I pass it, no longer visible. So it's only visible for this duration of time, forever whatever the big dark green bar is. So I'm doing a simple walk of my dragon. She looks like this. And as you can see she has a lot more to her. But in this animation, when I'm starting it from scratch, what I'm doing first is using very simple sticks to, because you don't want to waste all your time drawing this really detailed animation and then it just being wrong. It's better to work it out as a sketch first. So I'm using very, you know, to get the gist with the stick figures, I go along the outside of my limbs. So I'm, I'm starting with this being my main foot. So the front left forefoot is my main foot. It's what I'm leading all my other feet on. Everybody has a good foot that they walk on. Being that her back right foot, her hind foot, is um, lame. She has a slight limp, which I'm not animating here. I will add it in later. Um, this foot is her dominant foot. So when she walks, this will be her leading foot. I already have four frames done, so she goes from here to here. And um, you can alter your opacity either way and it should be maintained. I do have these overlapping, so when I am drawing on top of one or the other, I can see what's underneath it. So she has about half of her, um, her GAN right now. I'm going to go ahead and draw one layer on top of it as a demonstration for how you can do use Photoshop like a light box, much like 2D animators did traditionally. There's so much less paper and pencils and graphite and such scattered everywhere if you do it through Photoshop. I'm going to pick a brush that's a lot smaller since I just my computer decided it wanted to drop my audio, so this is the second time I'm doing this. Because I love you guys. All 100 people that will watch this, and all two people who will comment. You guys are awesome. Her head has already gone out. So her head's going to be probably level right now, because it goes out with the extension of her spine, and her tail goes up slightly when she raises or pulls her head forward. And she should pull her head forward at the height of every step. So, I'm at this point where I'm at five, and she should be, this leg should come off the ground now. And this leg should come down. In the beginning, I had these very bold, so you could see directly which legs are definitely in the front. Um, I stopped doing that as I went because I got distracted. So we're going to start with my hind left foot. I had to look at my hand to figure out which side of the, the dragon it was on um, as my dominant foot. So we're going to start with that one. And we're going to make my pen not at 49 opacity. I'm not sure why it's not drawing. 
I had this problem earlier. Bloop, bloop. Maybe because I'm drawing in white. Derp. Don't she love being taught by somebody who didn't realize that she was drawing in white, not black? It's wonderful. Oh, well, it's free. It's on the internet. Who cares, right? So, uh, I know that when she brings her foot off the ground, her shoulder is going to come forward a bit. Because this area right here is going to come up. What happens here is I'm going to draw it too high. But that's what these tests are for. Um, she pulls her leg up so she can have a better eraser. It was so much better at this like two minutes ago. <laughs> there we go, okay. So when her leg comes off the ground, all the weight is going to be put on the front leg right here. Because this leg is going to be stationary on the ground. I'm not sure if her leg's going to be that high, so I'm going to start over because I'm very clearly doing this wrong. And instead of starting with her strong foot, I'm going to start with this foot. This will help me figure out... I really should save my settings. Help me figure out how high this leg should be. So I think it's going to be about right there. About where I had it before I started questioning my good judgment. This leg is going to be coming almost all the way down. As you can see, I have a little mark right here. Tell me where my leg should start. I'm going to bring this down to be about the same length. There is some squatching and stretching that goes on in the back legs when weight is taken off or distributed and the muscles are moving. So I'm just implying that right now since it's a sketch. At this point, she's probably going to have just touched her toes down because she was lifting her toes in anticipation of touching the ground. In a walk animation, there's a lot of the 12 principles of animation, including squash and stretch and anticipation. But they're so minuscule, but if done properly, is, an, is a very good asset to have. And so here I'm going to go ahead and do the back leg which at this point should be off the ground. And so here we have her feet and nothing else. Whoop. So I want to go ahead and fill in quickly. Because her head was coming back, so her head's going to be a stationary now, because right now it's a little stretched. So I'm going to use my marquee tool after I trace this, grab and pull her head back a little, and lower it ever so slightly. This gives that illusion of the head bob that horses have and many of the other um, quadrupedal uh, terrestrial locomotion. A lot of words came out there. A lot of animals with longer necks have um, help use, move their neck with their motion to help with momentum. And as her spine is less stressed, her tail will lower slightly because I have it going up and down. I'm just putting this in gesturally right now. Nothing too specific because I don't want to get into that yet anyway. And I'm going to put in these lines. These are to imply that there's more volume here. Not that that's the shape of her legs, because it's not. Okay, so let's see how this plays from the beginning. You can press space bar to play any animation in Photoshop. So here she has the start of her walk, and again, and again. 
To make these so they don't overlap and you can view your animation in a cleaner way, all you have to do is slide these over when you're done using your Photoshop like light box. So you can look at this in a cleaner animation. So she's taking a few steps here. And that's the basics of animation in Photoshop. I mean, you can go all the way and strain yourself to death, or you can do something really simple and cute. I hope this was useful to everybody, and I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, if you have any questions, please leave them as a comment, and I will answer them as best I can. This is Dory, signing out.